I'm Karina Wilhelm. I work here at the Arizona State University Design and the Arts Library, and I have some books from the Kelmscott Press. So the Kelmscott Press is one of the finest uh, presses of the 19th century. It was created by William Morris in 1891. It was created in order to bring bookmaking back to an ideal form which in Morris's case believed it came out of the 15th and 16th century. From 1891 to 1898, uh, the Kelmscott Press produced 53 publications, and ASU Library owns a complete set of them. So here we have uh, two editions of The Story of the Glittering Plain, which was written by William Morris. The first one is our first publication that was ever printed by the Kelmscott Press from 1891. And then here we have the larger book, is the 1894 edition, which has illustrations by Walter Crane. And it's actually the only book that Walter Crane ever illustrated for the Kelmscott Press. So William Morris went through and he selected all of these elements. He selected handmade paper, he picked fine black ink from Germany, and he also designed his own fonts in three different types. He created his own floral decorative motifs in borders and initials which are very reminiscent of his uh, furniture and decorating company designs. And so he also uh, selected artists from among his friends. He selected Edward Byrne Jones, who was a follower of the Pre-Raphaelites. And he also selected Walter Crane, who was a well-known children's book illustrator. So Walter Crane was one of the great uh, children's illustrators of the 19th century. His books are beloved by generations. When he was growing up, his father was a painter and his brothers worked in the printing uh, business. And as a 13-year-old, Walter Crane was apprenticed to a wood engraver, and this led to a career as a book illustrator. Some of the most famous books by Walter Crane are his Six Penny Toy Books, which were children's books that were illustrated in full color, but they were also very inexpensive so that many people could afford them. Like William Morris, Walter Crane believed that books should be a unified whole of both the illustrations and the text. Most of Walter Crane's illustrations were full color and had fine attention to detail. In fact, some of the details mark the original source location of the fairy tales that he's illustrating. Walter Crane was also a painter. He wasn't actually a member of the Brotherhood, but he was a follower of the Pre-Raphaelites. You see some of their themes, their love for classical and medieval themes in his art. So William Morris and Walter Crane met in the 1870s. Like I said, they had this friendship. And then when Morris opened his printing press, he intended for Walter Crane to illustrate the first edition of the, of the press. Walter Crane didn't have the illustrations ready to fit Morris's timeline. So Morris went ahead and printed the first book, The Story of the Glittering Plain, uh, without the illustrations. They ended up printing 21 other books and then in 1894, when uh, the illustrations were ready, then it was reprinted, and it was the only book to be printed twice. It was printed with 23 of Walter Crane's illustrations and seven of William Morris's decorative motifs. So the Glittering Plain shows a lot of the ideals that William Morris had when creating the Kelmscott Press. A lot of the Victorian era printing ended up looking very gray due to the type of ink that was used. But in the Glittering Plain, we see very dark black images and text. And this is created from the uh, bold Gothic type that Morris chose, as well as the fine black ink that he chose from Germany. We also see a denseness of text in this publication. And this was created by eliminating excess space between words and lines, which was also very important to William Morris. William Morris and Walter Crane shared a love of beautiful books, and they believed that text and illustrations should be cohesive. So Walter Crane was never sure that his illustrations were sufficiently gothic for Morris's taste. And in fact, a lot of people have said that they look more Renaissance than medieval, and that they don't fit the gothic nature of most of the Kelmscott Press books. Most of Crane's works were in full color and had fine attention to detail. However, in the Glittering Plain, because of the printing process, a lot of the details that are seen in, in Walter Crane's other works had to be taken out. Um, this was because his drawings had to be engraved on wood, and so therefore a lot of the details were lost, and I 
I feel like some of the, the dissonance between the text and the illustrations come from this. William Morris selected Gothic fonts for his books, um, but Walter Crane used calligraphy in some of his illustrations and some of his own books. In the Queen of Summer book, uh, we see some of Walter Crane's calligraphy, and it serves as a cohesive element going along with the illustration. However, this isn't usually considered the case with the glittering plane. Many people feel that the illustrations in the text don't quite match up with the glittering plane, and Walter Crane actually did not agree with the font that uh, William Morris chose. He felt like it was almost unreadable because there was so little space between the words. So there's kind of a hypocrisy with Walter Crane and William Morris working together. They were both members of the Socialist League and they felt like industrialization hurt the common man, the common worker. And Walter Crane's other works were very inexpensive and served to bring beauty to the common man. But with the Count Scott Press, they were printed in very limited editions and they were very expensive. So the works that Walter Crane did for the Count Scott Press would have only reached the very wealthy. And so there's kind of a, a disconnect between this idea that he was a socialist, but here he is working on something that's very expensive. So William Morris and Walter Crane were contemporaries and friends. They both shared a love of beautiful books and really wanted to make a cohesive product between the illustrations and the text. In fact, a recent biographer wrote that Crane believed that a book was a complete package whose presentation needed to convey a unified message derived from all of its facets. The 1894 publication of The Glittering Plain shows William Morris and Walter Crane's attempt to realize this ideal. In many ways, uh, The Glittering Plain is a typical Count Scott Press book, but with the addition of the Walter Crane illustrations, it makes it a unique object.